welcome back to another one of my Let's Make a Game videos. I'm Sukunri, and today I'm going to be going over database basics that cover classes and actors. Now if you haven't watched my previous video that was database basics that cover skills and items, I suggest that you click on the little eye in the top right corner of your screen and click on the video that's shown. That'll take you to the video and you can watch that before watching this, though it is not necessary for this video. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open our database. And as you can see here in our classes tab, I've already changed the maximum from 4 to 10 by clicking over here and changing that number from 4 to 10. I'm leaving the four base classes here. Um, you can delete them if you want, but I've chosen to leave them here for later use. And I've used the fifth slot for a template separator, and I've already started by making four templates. Now, the chosen one is a template um, that we refer to as a master class that is actually something Yanfly suggests if you've watched his videos or kept up with him. Um, and what this is, is it's a class that has every skill available to your players regardless of class. So all of my magic skills, healing skills, sword skills, everything is right here. And then here in the traits, you will also give them access to the magic skills, special skills, all the weapons, dagger sword, flail, so on, all the armor types, magic light heavy, small and large shields. And this class is essentially meant to be used by all of your characters to see how the use of certain skills can help balance your game later. Now I personally oppose this because I don't believe that my mage should have access to sword skills unless they're able to use swords. So instead I've separated the chosen one to four different classes. Here we have the mercenary, the knight, and the cleric, which as you can see I've changed their parameters, I've changed what um, their magic, weapons, and armor they can use, and I've added all of the skills that they will earn throughout the process of my game. All available at level 1 for testing purposes. Now I'm going to show you how to make the class right now. I'm going to be making a sorcerer class. And so, main thing is you need an empty slot. As you can see right here in the traits, all of these are here by default. So what the target rate means is it's the chance that your char that character will be targeted by an enemy. If everyone has the same target chance, everyone is equally likely to be hit. Target chance raised ranges from 0 to 1,000, so at 1,000 you get attacked more often than anyone else, and at 0 you get targeted less often. You can use this to make certain skills that help um, hide your character or focus aggro on your character. Your hit rate is your accuracy. By default here it's 95%. Um, I am going to go ahead and change this to 100% for the sake of balancing and templates. Uh, what this means is it'll roll um, a number from 1 to 100 in some formula and it will determine whether or not I've managed to land a hit on my opponent. From there it will take my opponent's evasion rate, which in our case was B5%, and it would roll to see if they dodge it. If they do not dodge it, we then go over to the critical rate roll and it'll determine whether or not the hit was a critical hit, which will do three times the normal damage by default. Now, for the sake of balancing, I am going to delete evasion and critical rate from all of these classes because that will actually change some of the information that we're getting when we're running our balancing tests and make it not as reliable as we would like it to be. So, for this sake, like with the skills in the video before, we are removing all critical hit chance altogether and all chances to dodge. Anyway, going back here to my tentative tab, um, you want to name your class. I'm going to call this the Sorcerer. Um, here in your parameter curves, you're going to want to change the parameters to what best suits your class. As a mage, they're going to have fairly low HP. Um, their MP totals are going to be pretty high. Their attack is going to be minuscule. Defense, maybe a little. Uh, magic attack, they are a magic attack focused class, so they're going to have the highest possible magic attack. They are decent at dodging, or um, sorry, defending against magical attacks. So either B or C is what I would suggest. And I'm going to keep their speed at an average. I'm not going to touch luck at all, because luck is used primarily for state resist, and I'm going to show you in another video how to use it in different ways. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it the exact same. So now that we've altered the parameters, we need to go over here to the traits and alter the traits. Now, he already by default has access to magic, has access to a dagger, which is fine. 
I don't have staves, but I'm going to add access to the cane that the cleric has so that the sorcerer has an option of either being a having melee attacks or you know some magic amplification there. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and add what armor they have access to. So in this case, light armor and also magic armor is what I'm going to be giving him access to. And then we have to populate this with all of the skills he can learn. But instead of making you watch that, I'm going to go over here to the Chosen One tab where all of my skills are already there. And this is where I actually like the Chosen One class because um, I can go down here to Lightning Storm and just shift click, right click copy, move over to Sorcerer, right click paste, and there are all his elemental skills right there. And it was that simple. So now, now that I've shown you how to make your classes, um, we're going to go over to the Actors tab. And right here, I've already changed the maximum to 5, and I'm going to go over that in a minute. But here I've made Harold a Mercenary. Um, I'm going to go over what this is here in a moment. Theresa's a Knight, Marcia's a Cleric, and Lucius is the Sorcerer. And I'm going to make another character, I'm going to name her Lisa. And she's going to be Actor 1-6. And I'm just going to have to choose all of this. Of course, when you make um, a character, you can use your own assets, or you can use the generator if you desire. But basically, I just want to show you a neat little thing with traits on the actors. Since we have Mercenary Lisa and we have Mercenary Harold, Harold has the traits where his maximum HP is 10% higher, so it's 110% of what the class gives. But his MP is 90%, so it's 10% lower than what the class gives. Whereas Lisa would keep the averages. But maybe I want Lisa to be a little different too. We're going to go over here to the slot type, and we're going to give her the ability to dual wield. Uh, now it won't show here right away, so you're going to want to move tabs and then come back so it'll refresh. You can probably just shift characters too. Um, but now she can equip two swords, but she no longer has access to shields. And maybe I want to give her a different type of weapon, so let's give her daggers. She now has access to daggers and can wield either daggers or swords. You can even seal away um, swords so that she can't use swords at all. Um, I'm not going to do that here. And of course, like with Harold, we can change her parameters. So I want her to be more roguelike, so I'm going to give her, oh not a thousand, 120% of the agility, so she's got 20% more than Harold will. But she's going to have less attack than her. So she'll attack twice, or she'll attack with two weapons worth of damage because of the dual wielding trait. But she does do less damage normally, but she is faster. Now. Things you can do to further uh, how different the characters are is Lisa in this case, since she wields a dagger, you could go to skills here and add a skill type, well, not skill, add, and we could give her dagger skills by default. So she'll have access to dagger skills, whereas Harold will not. Likewise, we could give Harold shield skills, but um, instead, there's actually a different way we can do this too. We're gonna move over here to the um, armors. And for shields, for like Herald, we can add the skill type shield skills. We can even add the skill itself, like shield bash. Um, and with weapons, you can actually do the same thing. So like here with dagger, I've added dagger skills. And I can make the dagger add a specific skill. Now a way you can differentiate skills between just weapon use is right here in skills, like um, the Sonic Thrust skill. At the very bottom, you have the required weapons information. And I've given access to swords for Sonic Thrust. Um, actually, let's go ahead and give it to Spears. So now, anyone wielding a sword or a spear will be able to use Sonic Thrust. But if they are not wielding either of these two weapons, they cannot use the skill even if they know it. Now, in Double Slash's case, you can use a sword or a dagger. So if the um, Lisa were to use two daggers, she can still use this skill because she has a dagger equipped. Likewise, if she had two swords, she can still use this skill. But notice that I can't put a shield on here, because a shield is not considered a weapon. So that's why Shield Bash doesn't have the required weapons, but instead has the required skill type of shield skills that I've given access 
through equipping a shield. Now I hope that you found that um, informational. I hope that it helps you with um, getting your database ready. In the next episode we're actually going to cover weapons and armors and then we're going to move to making our first map with our first town and starting our character's adventure in two videos. So I hope you're ready for that. I hope you're as excited as I am to get this going. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!